What's up everybody, Kinetic here and welcome back to Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls. This is an updated guide for the Fire Shield Bash Crusader that I've been running since quite a while now actually. Um, it's the version that I prefer even here in patch 2.3. Uh, I know that the sweep attack version for the roll and set is still actually doing really well and is even a leaderboard contender alongside the new Seeker of Light set which is bringing of course the, the hammered in builds but the Shield Bash build again and since it's only for torment 10 rift farming is my personal favorite uh it's got good mobility actually it's got fantastic mobility it's got good damage and it has some nice control and just the way that it plays is more interesting to me than standing in one place and like whipping my flail really fast it looks like my crusaders fapping like furiously anyway let's go over the set bonuses right the the roll on set has uh, some really nice stuff for both shield bash and sweep attack and that's why we're able to get like two different builds out of one set which is really cool but i'll just go over what it does for shield bash so as not to confuse you every use of shield bash reduces the cooldown times of your laws and defensive skills by one second this means every single defensive skill here and every single law has a massive amount of cooldown reduction with this set increase the damage of shield bash uh, by 500% which is pretty good every use of shield bash that hits an enemy grants 30% attack speed for three seconds and this stacks up to five times so for the most part Across our gear, we're not really looking for any kind of attack speed on top of this because this is already pretty fast. Uh, even in my Paragon points, I think I don't even really go for attack speed because it ticks really fast. And um, yeah, you'll be shield bashing like crazy in no time with this. Uh, this is also kind of goes into the gameplay of this, which um, is challenging. I'll say it like that. Some people will say Crusader is just total shit right now. And I have to admit, after playing my Demon Hunter for the past couple of weeks, it's kind of hard to come back to a Crusader. Later. But, um, you know, there's always another way of looking at it, and I look at it like it's a challenge. If you want to, you know, go easy mode, yeah, go Demon Hunter, because it doesn't really get any easier than that with multi-shot builds, right? Uh, Crusader builds, I think, are more challenging. You have to think a little bit more about it, and it requires some very careful min-maxing in uh, certain areas. And the more that you look into it, the more that you can get out of it, and the more fun that it becomes. So, um, that's all of the, the set bonuses. Now, the cool thing about the Roland set, which I like for the Shield Bash, is that it doesn't require a specific weapon. The, the Sweep Attack build kind of does. The Golden Flints, I believe it is, or whatever. The new Seeker of Light set also has kind of a required weapon as well, Johanna's Argument, but not so much here. So we can play a little bit more with weapons, and you'll see what happens when we get into the Kanai Cube. But we do want this shield, the Pyro Morella. This reduces the wrath cost of our shield bash by up to 50%. If you can get crit hit chance and shield bash damage on it, that'd be sweet. As it is, unfortunately, I only got crit hit chance. Hmm. Draken's Lesson. I actually had a reaction video from the live stream uh, when this finally dropped, because I couldn't find it for the longest time. When your shield bash hits three or fewer enemies, its damage is increased by up to 200% and 25% of its wrath cost is refunded. And this is a part of what's going to help us bring down the cost of our shield bash uh, to really, really low levels. That way we can really spam a lot when once we get those attack speed ticks up there. But um, this is a fantastic piece. And it also, I think, it, it kind of gives you... A little reassurance that you don't have to worry too much about waiting until you've collected like 50 plus enemies or something like that before you start using your resource because if you only hit like a couple of people or whatever until you do get to maybe a bigger pack or an elite pack or something like that um, you'll get increased damage and it's not going to cost as much so uh, why not but um, yeah also uh, this is really cool this is something that I just got and it blew me away once once I found it I've been farming for Hellfire amulets across all my classes and I got something decent here for a shield bash build I think it's a Hellfire amulet with 736 strength I've uh, I already had it with 9% increase uh, hit chance critical hit chance rolled up to for now 73% but it's got gain the towering shield passive the Towering Shield passive is a must-have passive. In fact, I think for the most part we're almost done. We can start talking about skills. 
Uh, focus, restraint, you guys know this stuff, right? The ge Okay, the, the legendary gems though, this is really important actually. Some builds are kind of like easy to mess around with legendary gems, not so much here. Uh, these are pretty much what you probably should be putting here. The gizzard is going to help your survivability loads. The tegut, because of our increased attack speed, is going to give us increased damage and is also going to help our survivability as well by giving us stacks of armor and uh, bane of the trap, which is pretty much everything that you would normally go with uh, for every class now. Um, right, we're also going with the diamond for reduced cooldown because we do want reduced cooldown uh, as much as possible. Like, the, as much as we can get, the better. That's cool. Uh, for the belt, it kind of depends on your survivability. I would Witching Hour because my survivability has gotten uh, significantly better uh, step by step as I'm making improvements. But if you have a string of ears, this would also definitely be a great alternative. Let's go over the Kanai Cube now, actually, before I forget. This is, uh, this is the cool thing. I was actually just talking with somebody uh, on the last live stream, and I was saying, you know what? It'd be cool if we could squeeze some more like block hit chance into some of these builds, or just make an entire build about blocking. <laughs> well, the Blood Brother weapon gives us a 20% chance to block attacks, and blocked attacks inflict 30% less damage after blocking an attack. Your next attack inflicts 30% additional damage. So, just picture it in your head, right? You've got it sped up, right? You're shield blashing, bam, 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 into, uh, into like, uh, an elite pack's face or something like that. Got all these dudes, like, trying to, like, knock you out and stuff, but you have such crazy high uh, block hit, uh, yeah, block chance, right, that you're blocking those attacks and you're dealing 30% more damage. This looks so stupid, doesn't it? <laughs> you're increasing your damage for those shield bashes by 30%. It's pretty awesome. Cinder Code, this is what I was using way back before 2.3 for my shield bash build. This is also a huge part and a must have really for this build, reducing our resource cost of fire skills. We have a fire rune on our shield bash now uh, by 30%. Absolute must have. Unity, also a, a really big part of our survivability. Put that on your, your follower and put that on yourself and you're good to go. For, okay, for groups though, you definitely don't want to have unity. Definitely put convention of elements instead in this space. Um, and that's really, the I would say the only major change that I would make to this in a single player versus a multiplayer. Maybe take out one of these skills. I'm gonna leave that up to you and put in steed charge maybe to try and keep up with those barbarians or whatever. It's up to you. Let's go over the skills now. So we just talked about kind of it like increasing our block chance and I'll show you why. Since I've got towering shield up there in my uh, my hellfire amulet, I've actually gone ahead and put renewal in its place. Whenever you successfully block, you gain 16,000 plus life. And I believe that's a variable number so it may read something different for you. This is, since I have that, uh, in my amulet, this is definitely what I'm gonna put here. If I didn't have that, if I didn't have a Hellfire amulet, for example, I would probably have, I don't know, either Frozen or an Anti-Poison. Anti-Frozen or Anti-Poison is probably the, the, some of the two deadliest, I think, uh, for Crusaders, right? Uh, kind of amulet in, uh, in that place. And then Towering Shield would go here instead. A uh, Towering Shield, of course, increases the damage of Punish, Shield Bash, and we're not using Blessed Shield by 20% and reduces the cooldown of Shield Glare by 30%, which is crazy. So it's already getting, like, Shield Glare is already getting a massive cooldown because of the set, plus 30% more. You can Shield Glare a whole lot with this. Anyway, going back into, uh, going back into the passives, I guess, the Indestructible, Finery, because we have all these gems, and of course, Heavenly Strength. Nice thing about Crusader is they also have skills that they can go about with. Uh, to further increase their block chance. So we have Punish with Roar, which also has Fire as its element, which is great because we are dealing additional fire damage, especially through our Bracers, right? But Strike Your Enemy for 335 weapon damage as Fire and gain Hardened Senses, which is basically a buff that you'll see here that will tick, uh, increasing your block chance by 15% for 5 seconds. This is also, of course, going to be half of our requirement for Focus and Restraint. With the rune, when you block with hardened senses active, you explode with fury, dealing 75% weapon damage as fire to enemies within 15 yards. So again, we're going to be uh, increasing our damage through focus and restraint, through uh, our block chance with the Blood Brother and our Kanai Cube. Really, really nice stuff here. 
Shield bats should crumble. Unfortunately, crumble is the only fire rune. I really wish there were more fire runes. Something that, for example, would deal more damage around our Crusader. Because as it is, this is, I want to say it's like maybe like a 45 degree angle in front of us or something like that. It's so... You, I, um, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it sometimes. Like, sometimes I, I, I like it the way it is, and other times I wish it would, like, just explode all around me with uh, these crumbles in all directions around the Crusader. Thanks to our set bonuses, it makes it really easy to bring along Iron Skin, for example, since it is a defensive skill. It says 30 second cooldown, but it's going to be coming up a whole lot faster than that. And this is going to help us absorb 50% of all incoming damage with the rune for uh, 7 seconds. The utility, Provoke Hit Me, this is a really nice skill that doesn't just generate wrath, right? This isn't just about generating wrath, it also taunts all enemies, which helps you protect party members, for example. And with the Hit Me rune, gain 50% increased block chance for 4 seconds after Provoke. Nice stuff. Uh, Shield Glare, again, this isn't just about the, uh, the wrath generation, this also interrupts a lot of uh, enemies that uh, are trying to maybe do some kind of a mega hit or something like that. I use this all the time, for example, to interrupt Rift Guardians to stop them from whatever it is that they're trying to cast or whatever. You can see it like coming from just regular minions to Rift Guardians. A lot of them have like a wind up animation before they, they drop the hammer on your ass. You can interrupt that with Shield Glare and I love doing that. This is also, of course, going to help you proc your Bane of the Trapped. Increase damage there. Laws of Valor with Critical Rune. We are gaining some passive effects here of 8% increased attack speed, which is pretty cool. But more importantly, attack speed uh, and 100% increased critical hit damage for 5 seconds. Now, uh, the more that I've had this on my Shield Bash, it's m it really woken me up to the, the proper timing of activating this skill. I used to, and I think you might be able to see this in my old Crusader videos, I used to go right into a fight going ahead and activating Laws of Valor for that critical hit damage, which is actually a huge waste because you haven't quite sped up your attack speed yet, uh, so you'll just be like, bam, bam, or something like that. So you might get a couple of hits in with Shield Bash before the law finishes off, but instead, what I do now is I wait until I've got the set bonuses increasing my attack speed. So I'll do like two, three, four hits or something like that, and then I'll activate the law because by then my attack speed is sped up so much more I can get easily two or three times more hits while this critical effect is increasing through the laws of valor. It's all in the way that you play this build, it really is. Um, and yeah, Zealous Glare. So there you go guys, I think that uh, that pretty much covers it all. Next up, let's see a couple of clips of the Fire Crusader Shield Bash build in action. Wait longer.
Not enough rats. A most thrilling battle. A... I must heal. I'm injured. My wrath is low. Not yet. That feels better. Thanks for watching this video on my Shield Bash build here for Crusaders farming Torment 10 Rifts in Diablo 3 Patch 2.3. Again, uh, it's a, per a matter of personal preference. Uh, my choice is to play a, uh, a Shield Bash build. I think it's more fun than playing the Sweep builds. I think it also fits better, especially with group play, doing a Shield Bash build rather than a Hammered In build because of the way that mobility is such a huge factor, I think. Oftentimes in uh, multiplayer games, usually the speed at which people are moving is so fast, like unless you're uh, way ahead of everybody, maybe using Steed Charge or something like that, and going ahead and you start charging up your hammers or whatever, I don't think that Hammered In is really going to be the build that you're going to see very many people using in, um, in multiplayer rifts. If you have any questions or comments about Crusaders or this build in general, let me know down in the comment section below. Click the like button to support these Crusader and other Diablo 3 videos here on the channel. I've got more builds for farming, for greater rifts, all sorts of things coming up in the very near future. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next video. My name is Kinetic, and I'll see you next time.